Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, acne, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we want to hear from you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, ingredients, formulation, skin care, something you may have heard about or read about or something somebody told you. If you have questions about nutritional supplements, we can help you. We can help you get off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program. If you so desire, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, you can call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, or you can check out my website, brightsideben.com, and order products right off the website. You can also go to my blogs, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com, which we update regularly with news stories and blog posts. There's also information about the longevity products on the, blo- on the blogs, on the websites. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470 if you want to order products or if you want to sign up and join the Brightside Ben team and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. We'll get your phone calls here in a little bit. We're talking skin health, using the skin as an example of the health of the entire body. A skin health issue is a body health issue, and that's the main point. Everything we talk about here on the bright side, it's the main point about skin. It's the main point about what we've been talking about here for the last couple of weeks, and it's really the, the key point of what I call the bright side philosophy, the fact that when we have a bone issue or a muscle issue or a heart problem or a nerve problem or we got insomnia or or any other physical health issue, including skin issues, our problem is not with the specific organ. It's not with the specific structure. This underlies the failure of modern medicine. It wants to treat the individual organs and the individual components as if they were segregated or divorced from the rest of the body. The body is a whole system. Everything is connected to everything else. The way you deal with a body problem is by addressing the health of the entire body. And once we understand this, it's going to become clear why doctors, and especially why specialists, are so impotent and helpless when it comes to reversing or eliminating disease. We rip on the medical model here all the time. I'm guilty. Mia culpa. Guilty as charged. But nothing, nothing highlights the utter intellectual bankruptcy, the health stupidity of the modern modern medical model more than specialists. Yes, doctoring really has no place when it comes to taking care of health, with the exception of stitching us up if we get hit by a bus. Or if we have some kind of, something gets cut off of our body, surgeons can can reattach it. And that's a, a miracle. Modern medicine, in terms of its technological prowess, in terms of surgery, is is really quite miraculous. But as far as day-to-day health goes, medicine is a failure. Doctoring is a failure. But nothing is as utter a failure as specialists or as specialism, if you will. 
specialists, like all doctors, are helpless when it comes to reversing or eliminating disease because health challenges are not special problems. They're not problems of special systems or of special organs or of special chemical processes. They're whole body problems. We said this so many times in the program. All disease is cell disease and all disease involves the same basic breakdowns. Nutritional deficiency, sugar, and the accumulation of sugar toxicity and toxicity in general, and oxygen deprivation. Last week we talked about the relationship between low levels of oxygen and the formation of pimples, zits. When was the last time you heard your dermatologist talk about ductal hypoxia? That is, low levels of oxygen in follicles and in pores. Yet we know, according to a paper published in the Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology, May of last year, low oxygen in pores and in follicles, ductal hypoxia, that's the fancy way of saying it, was referred to as the missing link in the medical understanding of acne. Yet we still see stupid commercials for antibiotics that can cause <laughs> chronic diarrhea and sun reactions and, and uh, hyperpigmentation, uh, 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 an antibiotic called Onextin for adult acne. We still see these crazy strategies of killing bacteria, or benzoyl peroxide and tetracycline and doxycycline for treating acne, which is a manifestation of the same stuff that goes wrong when you have arthritis, nutritional deficiency, low levels of oxygen, and blood sugar issues. The bottom line here, folks, is if you have a skin issue, you got a health issue. If you have a skin issue, you have a body issue. Psoriasis, think digestion, food allergies, fatty vitamins, EFAs, minerals, use probiotics and digestive enzymes. Nothing here is about the skin specifically, right? Now, I'm not saying rub this on your skin. I'm just saying, take care of your digestive system. Guess what? Your psoriasis will improve, and your likelihood of getting some horrible degenerative disease like cancer will decrease as well. Acne? Think zinc and vitamin A, lower blood sugar, stabilize your insulin. Do you know until the 1960s, dermatologists called acne skin diabetes, and they used to use skin, uh, used to use diabetic medication for their acne patients? Acne is a hyper condition. Acne is a hyper proliferative condition. That means it's a hyper growth state. Cells are dividing super rapidly. Acne bacteria, the bacteria that are supposedly cause acne, technically Propionibacterium acnes, P. acnes, that's a technical name for the bad guy in acne. P. acnes turns on the functioning of insulin. It makes insulin more active, and because insulin stimulates the growth of cells, that means hyperproliferation. Yes, the P. acnes may be the, the direct cause of the formation of blemishes, but they work. The P. acnes causes the acne, causes the blemishes by affecting blood sugar and by affecting insulin. That means stabilize your insulin and your acne will improve. That means stay away from insulin spiking foods. Doctors or dermatologists laugh about chocolate and acne. They go, ha, 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 chocolate doesn't cause acne. Ha, 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 food doesn't cause acne. Ha, 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 that's just crazy alternative medicine. Well, if your dermatologist says that, he needs to start reading his trade journals, including the American Academy of Dermatology, the uh, Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology and the Journal of Clinical Dermatology, etc. He should do some research. If your doctor is telling you that it has nothing to do with what you eat, your, your zits and your blemish, Acne bacteria affect insulin. Insulin affects growth. Acne is a growth condition. Skin cells dividing rapidly, at least partially. By the way, zinc not only down-regulates this pathway, zinc not only stabilizes insulin, but zinc also uh, is involved in sugar metabolism. And zinc also has immune boosting properties. And zinc also has antimicrobial properties. If you are taking your kid to a dermatologist for his zits, for his acne, or if you're an adult with acne, and you think you need a dermatologist, think again. You need zinc, not a doctor. 50 milligrams a day, zinc picolinate. Reduce your intake of, of uh, insulin and sugar spiking foods. Lay off the fruit juice and the desserts and the, and the uh, breads and the pastas, etc. Get on 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate. That's the best form of zinc. And get on your vitamin A, 20,000 IU a day. Throw in some selenium, throw in some NAC. Use topical retinol in high concentrations, truthtreatments.com. That's my retinol 5%. Not just for anti-aging, not just for dark spots, but also for blemishes, truthtreatments.com. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're going to talk about dry skin when we come back from our break. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Music. 
Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got some lines open for you at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here in uh, our next segment. We're talking acne. If you have acne, if you have blemishes, if your kid has acne, number one, start supplementing. That means zinc, vitamin A. You could use something called NAC, N-acetylcysteine. Vitamin E can be helpful. Selenium can be helpful. Essential fatty acids can be helpful. A lot of times kids who have acne or adults who have acne think that essential fatty acids may make their skin more oily. Well, as it turns out, under conditions of essential fatty acid deficiency, your skin oils will become thicker and they'll tend to clog pores more readily. So using essential fatty acids, your ultimate EFAs, omega-6s and omega-3s can have very important benefits for your acne patient or for yourself if you're dealing with acne. Topically, use retinol, high concentrations, dab it on the blemishes. I like retinol at 5% concentration. That's why I made my truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com retinol gel. You can dab it on blemishes. You can use it for dark spots. You can use it as an anti-aging product or to get yourself a little mini peel without having to go to the, go to the spa. You can find out all about the retinol, my retinol gel, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in a minute. I want to talk a little bit about dry skin. Acne is an oily skin condition. And then dry skin is a, a lack of skin oils, a lack of skin lipids. If you have dry skin, please understand you don't need a new or a stronger or more expensive, quote, moisturizer, unquote. I always say moisturizer in quotes because there's really no such thing as a moisturizer. It's a marketing term. Moisture means water. So... A moisturizer would be a shower or washing your face. Of course, that ends up drying your skin. So really, there's no such thing as a moisturizer except for uh, as a marketing term. And by the way, dry skin is not about ambient humidity. It's not because you live in Colorado or you live in Arizona or Nevada or California. It's not because the air is dry that you have dry skin. Dry skin is a lack of water trapping properties or a lack of uh, water trapping chemistry in the skin. It's a water trapping problem. That's why you can drink all the water you want. And it's not going to help your dry skin. I still hear skincare professionals and doctors and such saying, oh, you got dry skin, drink more water. No, wrong, bad answer. You can drink all the water you want and it's not going to help your dry skin. Has anybody ever had their dry skin disappear because they drank more water? No, never, because it's not a water problem. It's a water trapping problem. Under ordinary conditions, there are water trapping chemicals, water trapping molecules, water binding molecules in the skin. So if you have dry skin, you want to work on water trapping, water binding, not water. Almost everyone who has dry skin thinks it has something to do with lack of moisture in the air. It does not have to do with lack of moisture in the air, although... Low ambient humidity, low moisture in the air can exacerbate the problem, but it's not going to cause the problem. The skin is an adaptive structure, like the whole body is an adaptive system. It adapts. The skin is particularly adaptive. It turns over really quickly. Do you know that when you uh, come to Colorado or Arizona or Nevada or the desert from, a, from Miami, say, or New York, somewhere where there's lots of moisture in the air to somewhere where there's not, under ordinary conditions, if we're healthy, our skin will make more water trapping molecules. How cool is that? The skin will adapt to low ambient humidity, to, to uh, low moisture in the air by making more water trapping molecules. This is so cool. That means that if you have dry skin, all you gotta do is figure out how to make more water trapping molecules, water binding molecules. Oh, guess what? Moisturizers, they suppress water trapping molecule chemistry. Oh, yeah, moisturizers, the super high-tech ones that Jennifer Aniston recommends that we use. Oh, they suppress your natural moisture factor molecules. That's what they're called, the natural moisture factor. Somebody should tell Jennifer Aniston that her moisturizing cream is going to make her dry skin worse. How ironic is that? Our moisturizers make our dry skin worse. I used to work for Blistex. That's where I learned my uh, skin care chops, if you will. That's where I learned how to formulate is working for the Blistex Corporation, and we love that at Blistex. That's why you get addicted to your Blistex, because when you put it on, your lips stop making water trapping molecules, and then your Blistex or your chapstick or whatever it is, Carmex wears off, and now your lips are super dry, and of course you use more product, which makes them even drier, and then you use more product, which makes them even drier. That's called getting addicted to your lip medicine or your skin medicine. 
Why is it that dry skin incidence increases with age? Why is it that as we get older, we have more dry skin to the point where uh, almost 100%, probably 100% of adults over the age of 60 are dealing with at least some degree of dry skin. Why is that? Well, it's because as we get older, our bodies start to break down. And dry skin is the manifestation of a body breaking down. Dry skin should be regarded like all skin problems as an overall health problem. Fatty vitamins must have for dry skin. I mean must have, especially vitamin A. Vitamin E to a certain extent also. Essential fatty acids, EFAs, omega-6s and omega-3s, your ultimate EFAs from longevity, a must have for uh, dry skin. And a healthy digestive system so you can absorb your fats, also important for dry skin. If you had a gallbladder taken out or you have intestinal problems, IBS, Crohn's disease, celiac disease, ulcerative colitis, if you have a pancreatic issue, this covers a lot of folks, you're going to have dry skin. And you can, take all, you can put all the moisturizer you want, and you can even take all the supplements you want. But if you don't absorb them, they're not going to have their benefits. Use your fatty vitamins with your ultimate enzymes. Use your fatty vitamins with apple cider vinegar. Use your fatty vitamins with bile, B-I-L-E, bile salts. Use your fatty vitamins with meals. All of these will upregulate the amount of nutrients that are absorbed into the blood. It's not what you take, it's what you absorb. And then we have the second of our dynamic duo of skincare ingredients. Vitamin A is the first of the dynamic duo of skincare ingredients, and then there's vitamin C. Vitamin C is ridiculously important for skin health, along with vitamin A. The two most important ingredients, the two most important vitamins, the two most important nutrients for your skin, like vitamin A, Vitamin C is a good time vitamin. It's the vitamin of the good times. It's a summertime vitamin. Vitamin C's presence tells the body that all is right in the world, that it can go ahead and build, that it can go ahead and make things. Vitamin C is a, uh, found in fruits and vegetables. It's a produce vitamin. It's, it's a summertime vitamin. It tells the body it's okay to grow. Under conditions of nutrient deficiency, when the body feels like it needs to to husband or conserve its nutrients when it is in a deficiency state or if it's not getting if it's not getting nutrients if it's not getting food it's going to or not getting the correct food nutrient loaded food it's going to redirect precious nutrients away from the skin towards the heart and the bones and the internal organs and structures the presence of nutrients on the other hand especially building nutrients like our dynamic duo vitamin A and C Tells the body it's safe. Tells the body all is good. Tells the body there's lots of resources. There's lots of food. Tells the body vitamin, C, vitamin C's presence in the blood tells the body it's summertime and it's time to grow. It's time to make bone. It's time to make connective tissue. It's time to make collagen. It's time to make new skin cells. It's time to make moisture factors. Vitamin C tells the blood it's okay to, or tells the body, I should say. Vitamin C in the blood tells the body it's okay to expend its precious resources on building tissue. It's okay to expend its resources on protecting the skin. Vitamin C is a super protective molecule, especially for the sun, by the way. We'll talk about sun protection, too, here uh, in the coming days as you hear more and more propaganda about using sunscreen, slathering on sunscreen. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening. Hey. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com if you miss a program. Head over to brightsideben.com, and uh, you can pull up any of the archives. You can also go to benfuchsarchives.com. There's a search engine up. If you miss, uh, miss a particular topic or you have a question about a specific topic, you can go to benfuchsarchives.com and search all the programs. Thank you to Peter in the U.K. for setting that up. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, please call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, or you can order products directly off my blog, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. If you're interested in purchasing any of my Truth Treatment products, retinol gel or omega-6 healing cream or the Truth Balm or Truth Serum, both loaded with vitamin C, by the way, you can head over to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. 
Okay, our number today, 844-236-6010. Tomorrow we're going to talk a little bit more about dry skin and eczema and dermatitis and rashes. And we'll tell you about a really interesting protein molecule that is associated with the formation of the skin surface barrier and deficiencies in this very interesting molecule that you hardly ever hear about are linked to dry skin, linked to eczema, linked to skin barrier defects, including psoriasis and dermatitis. And we'll talk about that tomorrow on the Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Steve in Virginia, what's going on? Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Uh, once again, uh, I had a question about, well, a little one about the ascorbate, uh, a little detail to ask on that again. But um, I had a friend who had an inflamed uh, pancreas, and uh, we thought that it was going to be worse, uh, but he's back at work now. And uh, I was wondering if there were some uh, sure, stuff you could do. nutrients we could help. Yeah. Absolutely. Probably. What did you want to say about ascorbate, though? Oh, we, oh, just to ask where, do you know, some good locations to try where we could uh, get the... the Truthtreatments.com. And you talking about topical ascorbic, ascorbic acid or uh, yes. internally? Well, internally, uh, well, let's just talk real quick about ascorbate. Ascorbate is a fancy way of saying ascorbic acid. Ascorbate, technically speaking, is the non-acid form of ascorbic acid. But leaving, leaving that aside, cells absorb vitamin C as ascorbate, which is why ascorbic acid is so effective as a, a source of vitamin C. Now, you hear people talking about, usually non-nutritionists, you know, people selling products, telling you about how ascorbic acid doesn't work, ascorbic acid can cause problems, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that cells utilize vitamin C as ascorbate, which is a form of ascorbic acid. You don't need anything fancy schmancy to get your vitamin C. That having been said, if you use vitamin C with bioflavonoids or with flavonoids, you can get better absorption of vitamin C. And it's true that in nature, vitamin C occurs in conjunction or with the presence of flavonoids, with other things. So, yes, it's true that as far as getting vitamin C into your body, you always want food-based vitamin C, ideally. But as far as getting vitamin C into the cells, it doesn't really matter if the vitamin C is in food or anywhere else. So... Uh, if you want to use, if you want to upregulate or increase vitamin C, vitamin C's effects in your body, plain old ascorbic acid, in my opinion, is is plenty good enough. Uh, always, though, food is going to be your best source of nutrients. Problem with foods is you don't get a lot of nutrients. In fact, you don't even really know how much nutritional value is left in your food. And vitamin C tends to be one of the more fragile and more vulnerable of the food-based vitamins. So if you're eating your, or you're, you're, uh, you're, you're getting your vitamin C from orange juice or from processed fruits and frozen fruits, et cetera, chances are pretty good you're not gonna get a heck of a lot of vitamin C, which is why I like ascorbic acid. That having been said, if you wanna to put topical vitamin C, uh, vitamin C on your skin, uh, vitamin C on your skin in order to get vitamin C benefits, you want fatty vitamin C or esterified or ester vitamin C, palmitate, or isopalmitate. That's why I made my truth treatment products, by the way, truthtreatments.com. Now, as far as pancreatitis goes, or, or uh, an inflamed pancreas, um, a pancreatitis means inflammation of the pancreas, you want to recognize that the pancreas is a digestive structure. And it's a very important digestive structure, digestive gland. There's a reason why pancreatic cancer is known as the deadliest form of cancer. It's because the pancreas is a house of enzymes. It's a little enzyme storage system. That's its main role, in addition to making insulin. It makes insulin and it makes digestive enzymes. So between insulin and digestive enzymes, you got yourself a digestive organ. The pancreas is a digestive structure. I call the pancreas the Mr. Cellophane of the body. Remember that movie in the play Chicago? There was a guy named Mr. Cellophane. Nobody saw him. He was transparent. I call him Mr. Cellophane Mr. because Cellophane he didn't get any respect. Well, the pancreas doesn't get any respect. It is arguably the most important structure in the body, the pancreas. It makes digestive enzymes and it makes insulin. And these digestive enzymes, by the way, have pro-immune properties, too. They help support the immune system. Pancreatitis is a really serious problem. In addition to being miserably painful, it could be life-threatening. It could be super serious. So for the pancreas, or for pancreatitis, calm the digestive system down with fasting. Pancreas is going to be working when we eat. If you have pancreatitis, you want to give your pancreas a vacation. You give your pancreas a vacation by fasting by not eating. You can also use pancreatic enzymes. In fact, that's a great nutritional supplement, pancreatic enzymes. Pancreatin. 
You can also use sodium bicarbonate about an hour or an hour and a half after you eat meals. The pancreas also makes sodium bicarbonate for the absorption process. So pancreatitis needs to be considered a digestive health issue first. Probably the wrong foods, putting a stress on the pancreas. Certainly sugar can do it. They can put a major stress on the pancreas. Use, uh, use uh, your, your sweeties, the healthy start pack to get your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, anything that will support sugar metabolism, the B vitamins, niacin, magnesium, amino acid taurine, the amino acid arginine, all of these can be helpful for supporting sugar metabolism. So can your ultimate EFAs. Selenium can help with sugar metabolism. Sodium bicarbonate, an hour and a half after, uh, after meals, that can help the pancreas. And then digestive enzymes with all your meals, including pancreatic enzymes or pancreatin, apple cider vinegar can be helpful as well. And don't forget to give yourself a food holiday. Take a fast. Do the swear of V fast. Go uh, have your friend order some swear of V or order some swear of V for your friend Steve and have him do a swear of V fast. Half a, half a bottle of swear of V every hour, six bottles in a 12 hour day. And you can fast for one or two days. And that can go a long way towards reducing inflammation of the pancreas, which in addition to being super painful, can be a very serious and significant health issue. Does that help, Steve? Yeah. Yes, that's uh, very helpful. And uh, what was that site again uh, to go to? Tr Truth, uh, truthtreatments.com. That's my Truth Treatment uh, skincare products, and you'll find okay. the topical vitamin C there. Truth Serum and Truth Balm. All right. Okay? Well, thank you thank very you, much. God bless you, buddy. Have a beautiful right, day, man. Too. Take okay. care. Okay, Robert in Colorado, what's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number, by the way, and we do have a line open for you. 844-236-6010. Robert, what's cooking, man? Hey, Ben, how are you? I'm doing good. How's it going yeah, today? me too. <laughs> it's doing great. Still uh, right. creeping down. I can't say how much because I'm trying to cross stage next time, So, but I don't want to okay. inspire anybody else. But All I right. have a challenge at the end of the day All with right. my eyes being not focusing. And it's like I get tired, and I'm staring at a computer all the time, and I'm just all wondering right. what I can do to... All right, well, I, well you, have you ever... Uh, do you know anything about eye exercises, eye muscle exercises? Have you ever heard about those, doing those? Yes, I have. Yes, okay, I have. Well, let's, uh, we got to take a break, Rob. We'll talk a little bit about eye exercises when we come back. And then, uh, you know, it's just a general breakdown, probably the muscles in the eyes breaking down. The muscles in the eyes, obviously, are going to be very, very tiny, so they're going to break down quickly. Hang tight, Robert. We'll get to you when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got a couple lines open. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> Got a couple lines open for you. Talking to Robert in Colorado about eye health. Robert, eye exercises. That's the best thing to do if you have a problem focusing. You there, Robert? Yep, I'm here. Okay, you want to th the uh, eyes are controlled by muscles. The focusing of the eyes is controlled by muscles, and like all the muscles in the body, and like the rest of the body, inflammation over the course of time takes its toll. So does nutritional deficiency, and of course, so does uh, inflammation and low levels of oxygen. So uh, I'll tell you about all those, all those ideas and how you can work with those here in a minute. But I like to do eye exercises and I do them when I'm standing in line at the bank or when I'm, uh, when I'm stuck in traffic or just sitting around doing nothing. Uh, something as simple as blinking. Blinking is a real simple way to keep your eyes fresh and to improve focusing. Uh, blink every couple of seconds. Notice how, how when you blink for like a minute, if you blinked every three or four seconds, you're going to notice that you feel a little bit of straining or soreness uh, after you blink. That's, just, that's a sign that the muscles in the eyes are starting to work. Uh, you, that should go away if you do it maybe once a day or twice a day. Practice blinking every three or four seconds for maybe a minute or two. You can also do what are called uh, figure, figures of eight focusing exercises where you kind of turn your eyes and a little make a make an eight a figure eight movement with your eyes kind of you know what i'm saying you kind of turn your uh -huh. eyes to the left and then up and then to the right and then down and left kind of do these little circles tracing a tracing a a, a figure eight with your eyes uh, it feels a little weird but that yep. can also be that can also be helpful and then you can practice near focusing and far focusing this will also build the muscles that are involved with focusing the eyes. Um, just kind of just just sit there and put your thumb in front of your eyes and and stare at your eye, stare at your thumb with your eyes, and then stare past your thumb with your eyes. So you go into near focus and then you go into far focus, and you alternate between near focus and far focusing. And these are all exercises that you can do to build uh, eye muscles. 
and that can help if you're nearsighted or farsighted or you notice that your eyesight is starting to starting to uh, starting to um, become compromised as you get older now most of the time or many times there are blood sugar issues associated with eye breakdown diabetes pre-diabetes so all of the health strategies that we talk about all the time for dealing with overall health conditions stabilize the blood sugar number one yeah uh, laying off of problem foods uh, is this is this my friend Robert, by the way? The, yep. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Yeah, so you, there's a very good possibility that you're dealing with blood sugar problems, Robert, uh, diabetes mm -hmm. or pre-diabetes. Uh, very well could be full-blown diabetes. Use the sweeties. Make sure you're practicing all of the dietary strategies for lowering blood sugar, staying away from blood sugar, spiking foods, more protein, more coconut oil. Protein and coconut oil are a great way, more protein and more, pro more coconut oil or coconut oil and butter are great ways to wean yourself off of insulin spiking foods. Use the Sweeties, use the Healthy Start Pack. Selenium can have an important role to play in eye health, so you may want to get on, on the ultimate selenium. If the problem is not in the muscles, it's more on the skin. The eyes are covered with a, a layer of tissue that's similar to your skin. Use the Vision FX product. Make sure you're getting lots of pigmented, colored vegetables. Using your colored vegetables with digestive enzymes and apple cider vinegar to make sure that you're absorbing your, uh, your pigments and your colored vegetables. Those can be important for eye health as well. And then uh, let's see if there's anything else. Of course, slow, deep breathing, making sure you're oxygenating is also important. And if you have any digestive health issues, that's important that you regulate or control those as well. You use all your digestive support and maybe do a food diary and stay away from problem foods. Yeah, okay? what, what's better, coconut oil or butter? They're both good. In my opinion, they're both good. Butter, I like butter a little slightly better, but butter is harder to cook with than coconut oil. Coconut oil is easier to cook with because butter will smoke and burn. Coconut oil has a much higher smoke point. Uh, so I, I try to mix. When I'm, when I'm uh, uh, cooking with butter or, or coconut oil, I mix the two together. Uh, right. Probably about six or seven parts coconut oil for every three or four parts butter. And no problems with rancidity in the coconut no, oil? No, 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 no. Coconut oil is not going to go rancid. I, I mean, eventually it will, but not for a long time. <laughs> Uh, Great. All right, buddy. Thanks so much, yeah. Robert. Take care, Thank bro. You. Take care. Hope right. to see you soon, man. Okay, 844-236-6010. Let's go to Nevada and welcome Robert to the bright side. What's up? Good morning. Uh, good morning, farmers. It's been a few times taking my call. Um, I am thinking about investing in a um, wheatgrass kit with the grinder and the wheatgrass seeds and everything. Um, I understand, uh, I heard a young lady talking about a few, a few weeks back on the Power Hour George Riley. Uh, that it goes, the wheatgrass, uh, when it's crushed and ground up and liquefies, you drink it, it goes into the cells and uh, well, moves out the uh, toxins and wastes. Yes. And when you're not used to it, it can cause you a little diarrhea. And mm. uh, just speak to wheatgrass a little bit and the benefits of it and what you think about it. Wheatgrass is amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. But you can't okay. eat wheatgrass. Wheatgrass is grass. That's all you, right. you need to know about. It's just, you know, go out and eat your lawn if you want if you want wheatgrass. I mean, your lawn is the same stuff. Grass is amazing, amazing, amazing nutritional food, nutritional okay. uh, nutritional substance. There's so much great stuff in grass. Problem is it's all locked up. It's all tied up. Uh, gorillas and, and horses and elephants and hippopotamuses, they all eat grass and they get really big, but they have a special digestive system that allows them to access the nutrients that are found in mm -hmm. the grass. And there are tremendous nutrients in there especially fats. You know, grass is a great source of fat, something called CLA and also essential fatty acids. But again, it's, you can't just go out and eat your lawn. You can't just munch on grass unless you're a gorilla or a hippopotamus or, or an elephant because you don't have the digestive system that's required to absorb or to utilize the nutrients that are locked up in the grass, thus the importance of juicing your grass. Uh, yeah, and yeah, waking, there'll be a grinder with as well. So I'll be yeah, grinding. grinding. It, exactly. Grinding, grinding yeah. it up. Yeah. Now, make sure you do it fresh because once you grind things up and once you process the grass, the nutrients are going to become destabilized. So you got to do it fresh. Um, there okay. are sugars. There's a lot of complex sugars, quite a bit of complex sugars in wheatgrass. And sometimes people can mm -hmm. react to that. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. people actually get nauseous from, from wheatgrass if they do too much wheatgrass. I've gotten nauseous from wheatgrass. I try to do, uh, when I go get wheatgrass, and I do about once or twice a week, I'll go to Whole Foods and get a wheatgrass juice. Um, I try to do two ounces of it. If I do more than two ounces of it all at once, I'll get a little queasy. So I try to mm -hmm. keep it to two ounces or so. Uh, and that usually, ha usually has to do with the sugars it may have something to do with detoxification but i my hunch is because it happens so quickly it has more to do with the uh, with the um, some of the contents that are in the wheatgrass especially the sugars that can okay. uh, cause a little bit of queasiness or nausea but wheatgrass is 
unbelievably important. It's important. To, you can use it topically. You can put it on your skin, uh, the juice on, right on your skin uh, to, help, um, to help with uh, skin issues, skin health issues. There's vitamin C in wheatgrass. There's zinc in wheatgrass. Both are very important for the skin. Of course, there's lots of carotenes in wheatgrass, which aren't exactly vitamin A, but they're similar to vitamin A, the plant version of vitamin A. And the neatest thing about wheatgrass, well, there's a lot of neat things about wheatgrass, but one of the neatest things is the chlorophyll. And chlorophyll is amazingly detoxifying. I mean, it may be the single most detoxifying substance there is on planet Earth. And of course, it's one of the most abundant substances on planet Earth. Chlorophyll is what a plant uses to turn the sun into solid material. There's a magic that occurs in a plant. The plant will somehow take photon energy, light energy from the sun, and convert it into a solid material. And it does it through the electrical activity of chlorophyll. You can get the same electrical benefits by eating chlorophyll, thus the importance of, uh, of, you, of eating lots of veggies, and especially wheatgrass, which is loaded with chlorophyll, and chlorophyll uh, is also a good source of magnesium, so of course you're going to get magnesium, all the benefits of magnesium from using wheatgrass as well. Uh, chlorophyll is a great breath deodorant or breath deodorizer if for folks who have, uh, either folks who have bad breath, or if, if you just ate uh, garlic or onions. So swishing uh, your mouth with a little wheatgrass juice can, ha can act as a great mouthwash, a great breath deodorizer. Drinking wheatgrass juice is a great deodorizer as well. Uh, there's so many benefits to wheatgrass, it's, it's hard to know where to begin. The B vitamins are rich in, in wheatgrass, and I said earlier, vitamin C is also uh, found in wheatgrass. It's just an amazing, amazing nutritional supplement, and I highly recommend it as often as you can. I personally do a couple ounces a week, but if you can do more than that, that's great too. And it's cheap on top of everything I, else. When I start on I need to go slow and use just a little bit of a correct, otherwise it will give me diarrhea or my body will freak out a little bit the first time go around. Go slow. Go slow with okay. it and, and do okay. it with a little bit of food or a little bit of fiber. That might help you too. Kind of tie a okay. soluble Sounds fiber, good. not 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 insoluble fiber, but soluble fiber. That'll help slow up the uh, the the passage of the wheatgrass through your digestive system. Does that help, Robert? Yeah, fiber like would scrambled eggs work or something? No, there's no that. fiber in scrambled you? eggs. Something something like a, a mushy fruit is a good source of fiber of soluble okay. fiber, like bananas okay. or or pears or apples, that kind of thing. Gotcha, okay. gotcha. Okay, thanks, bud. All right. Thank you, Robert. Yeah, there's two kinds of fiber. You got insoluble fiber. That's found in seeds uh, and grains, too, to a certain extent. And then you have soluble fiber, which is found in mushy fruits and mushy vegetables. Your soluble fiber will slow down the release of or the passage of food through the digestive system if you're dealing with diarrhea uh, or loose stools. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening, friends. Check out my website, truthtreatments.com, if you're interested in purchasing any of the truth treatment products. And if you want to join the Brightside Ben team, love to have you on my team. Help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can make some money too. Call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 or head over to pharmacistben.com and sign up right from the website. Thanks for listening, friends. Tomorrow we'll continue talking skin health. We'll talk about dry skin. We'll tell you about a molecule that nobody talks about that is really a key element when it comes to preventing and protecting yourself from dry skin or eczema or other skin barrier issues. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Have yourselves a wonderful, spectacular, awesome day, folks. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.